ओ सद्गमय तमसो मा ज्योतिर्गमय मृत्योर्मा अमृत गमय ओ शाति 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 ओ मे द डिवाइन लीडर्स फ्रॉम द अनरियल टू द रियल फ्रॉम डार्कनेस टू लाइट from death to immortality om peace 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 welcome to the sunday service of the vedanta society of toronto and uh, i'm doing it online today as i am away in uh, austin texas and uh, today's uh, subject is uh, worship of mother durga very relevant subject according to the time because we are going through navaratri and uh, today is the second day of the navaratri the holy uh, fortnight that is dedicated to the divine mother the nine days of worship of the divine mother um, so on this uh, the mother's worship will begin on uh, after uh, like four five six days from uh, shashti or the sixth day of the fortnight to 10th day of the fortnight from shashti to dashami so talking about the worship of mother durga is uh, just uh, most relevant and most important just to recapitulate and rem- remind us all about uh, the worship the festivity the joy that we go through during this time uh, as you know this time if you see world over it's a very hard time going on through wars and strifes and um, uh, difficult times for many people and this is the time to pray to the divine mother to take care of our children who are suffering anywhere in the world and giving them peace and succor and uh, making good um, thoughts giving good thoughts to the people who are um, who are having like a thought that are injurious to humanity so may all good thought prevail to hold human beings uh, as, as it is said that uh, Uh, may may all be happy may all be peaceful may all have good thoughts um, may goodness prevail in all that is our prayer and may the divine mother take care of her children who are suffering in different parts of the world now coming to durga puja with all prayer for the humanity with our heart feeling heart now we come to uh, the durga puja festival what is the worship of mother durga ha uh, durga is uh, the divine mother the divine mother god as mother god as mother is uh, worshiped in uh, in india very prominently we have different forms of shakti shakti worship uh, the divine god as father god as mother we worship equally god as father god as mother the divine consort of god the divinity of divine mother the primordial energy or power as we call to the divine mother adya shakti uh, she is the supreme power of uh, god that is the ultimate power that is manifest of this uh, as this universe the power that creates this universe that power that sustains that universe that power that absorbs that universe all is that divine power that divine mother the power manifests itself as good power and also as evil power and that's what all the story of mythology of durga puja says that power is manifested as good and bad and uh, the divine mother we say be propitiate mother please remove the evil uh, the power of uh, your side and grant us the benign uh, benign power of yours as we pray rudra yatte dakshinam mukham te namam pahi nityam as it is said in the vedic prayer o rudra o shiva please protect us through your benign face so like that we pray to divine mother mother please protect us through your divine benign power protect the whole humanity that is our prayer protect the whole universe through your benign power but the mother is uh, whole power even the destruction is the divine power is the divinity so that's what mother durga is she is a shakti so why it's called durga durga is called because of her power to remove affliction 
Durgati Nashini. She removes all our difficult times. Durgati. That's why she is Durga. Um, so the, the Durga, uh, how this Durga Puja came to being? So the mythological story says, as most of us know, that uh, when Devas and Asuras were fighting, so once this uh, Devas, the good people, lost to Asuras, the evil people. And uh, then uh, their um, abode, the Devas, abode was captured by the evils. Now Devas, they are good, but Asuras became more powerful. Now Devas uh, could not uh, recapture their place, their abode. Uh, then what what to do? They went to Brahma, they went to Vishnu, they went to Shiva, and all of them, the three uh, deities, three trinities of uh, Hinduism, they said, we are unable to make help you to re recapture the um, your lost ground. So then they said, what to do? So all gods assembled at one place, and from there came the power, em emanated the power from Vishnu, from Shiva, from Brahma, all this power came. They had gathered at one place, all good people. From Yama, from Varuna, from Agni, from Surya, all different deities of Hindu pantheon, all they came. And the power came and all power gathered at one place. And there all from that gathered power of all goodness, accumulated power of goodness, arose a beautiful female figure, female deity bright like the sun and brave like um, braver than anyone any other god so she is durga mother durga and that deity who are fearsome and who are beautiful and who are most powerful that was empowered by the different weapons of uh, uh, different gods uh, so that's how the mythology goes and she has many arms 10 arms and in each arm is a very little weapons were there because the enemy was very powerful. Enemy, the evil was very powerful to conquer that powerful enemy. Um, no other deity could do, no other god could do. So divine mother had to be created. Most powerful being, most powerful deity. That most powerful deity was then uh, given all the... Um, uh, helped by the Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesha, and her body was created by uh, the power of all Yama and Varuna and Agni and Surya. Some gave her hair, some gave her face, uh, some gave her eyes. Uh, like that whole divinity uh, was concentrated in this divine form of Mother Durga. Mother Durga is the embodiment of the divinity. That is what the concept of Mother Durga is. When we worship Durga, we worship all gods of Hinduism. Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesha, Yama, Shiva, um, and uh, your um, Varuna, Surya, Chandra. Everyone is worshipped when we worship Mother Durga. Because she is the combined force, combined power of goodness of all good beings. That is the symbol of goodness and the powerful symbol of goodness. That is Mother Durga. So whenever one is in trouble, one is in power, they remember Mother Durga and seek her blessing. That is how the worship of Mother Durga came. The worship of um, divine being as divine mother, the God as mother is uh, in Hinduism, though it is prominent, it is uh, in other, um, other religions also it is there. Particularly in um, Christianity, you know about the Divine Mother Mary, so much uh, worshipped in uh, in Catholic um, Christians. They worship Mary, the uh, Mother of Jesus, as the Divine Mother, and also Divine Mother's her manifestation is seen in many parts of the world, and gives that gives strength and hope to the people. The Mother as uh, the God as Mother become so closer, so um, relevant, so hopeful for, for people um, than the God who is sitting away, who is benign and peaceful, who is taking care from far. The mother becomes very much our part, very immediate um, power um, to protect us. And that, is the, um, that is the sign of the Divine Mother. So the Divine Mother worship um, um, 
throughout the year in many places. The Mother Durga is said to have 64 different uh, forms of Mother Durga. And um, how this Durga worship uh, came in Bengal? Uh, in Bengal, um, this mother worship has begun in like 14th century. There was worship, but it became more prominent to be worshipped in the images later on. But the worship of Mother Durga started um, more commonly in 16th century. And uh, later it um, started being worshipped in image, uh, making the image as described in uh, Durga Saptasati or Chandi, the, the, the Devi Mahatmyam. That book under the Markandeya Purana, there the Divine Mother Durga is described beautifully, how she is created, how she looks like, how she stands on the lion, and how many she has the ten arms, and all are described in uh, in the Devi Mahatmyam of the portion of the Markandeya Purana. And according, that is the basis of uh, the um, image of Durga that is worshipped. In that is all um, very nicely it is mentioned there. And uh, that's how it is uh, said that Durga Puja is worshipped and uh, with the, um, supporting scripture for Durga Puja is uh, Markandeya Puranas, um, Devi Mahatmyam or Durga Saptasati or Chandi book, that is scripture. In Bengal, it, uh, the um, public puja has become more popular. It started a few centuries ago. And the people gather and uh, they make a huge um, decorative places made of cloths and pandals, as they call, and uh, images, beautiful decorative images of mother is made. And the people gather to watch the image, watch the, uh, the, um, the tents or pandals that are so beautifully made in the forms of different temples, different historic places, huge in uh, size they are made. And the beautiful um, finishing, if you, you see that somewhere they made like beautiful uh, temple, made all of cloth, folded and made uh, cloth in the shape of a belurmat or sometimes in the shape of uh, some uh, Taj Mahal or sometimes in the shape of uh, any other different uh, famous architect in the world. And the inside is the deity of God that is made. So that is how Durga worship began in uh, Bengal. Uh, in Bengal, this um, Jo Durga worship, uh, Durga Mother Durga is worshipped in Bengal in image. But Navaratri, the nine days of worship of the Divine Mother, uh, is uh, common all over India. From the first day, that was yesterday, to the ninth day. Um, that is the Navami day uh, that Durga is worshipped through uh, various rituals and the uh, reciting of uh, Lalita Sastranama or Chandi um, and how that is worshipped throughout India in, uh, in South, in North, everywhere. And Durga Puja is more um, common in Bengali, not only in Bengali speaking people, of course, Bengali speaking people wherever they are in uh, Bengal or anywhere, any part of the world. Uh, they, their Durga Puja is the dearest festival, most popular and most close to their heart. So they, they try to worship Durga in image or Durga, they gather together. Durga Puja has now become a, a socio-religious um, cultural function where the root is, of course, the worship of mother is there. So the Durga Puja started that way in uh, Bengal. Moreover, in Bengal, Durga, Mother Durga is not just the deity, Devi that is worshipped and far away from, from the people. In uh, Bengal or uh, in the places in Bengal, Assam, Odisha or in uh, eastern part of Bihar, where uh, Durga Puja is celebrated for five days, uh, Mother Durga is supposed to come from her abode in Kailasa, where she lives with Shiva, the ultimate reality. Mother is its power, power manifested as the divine, uh, the, the divinity in that uh, feminine uh, form. And that mother is supposed to come to houses and villages in the cities. So mother comes as our mother, as our daughter coming to her father's house. And mother has come from her husband's place to our houses uh, to so that we can take care of her. Uh, so coming back to parents' house, that type of attitude we do. And there... Mother is, uh, uh, how is that done? So um, there are religious rituals and also there are uh, familiar um, 
reception. So mother is treated as um, as the daughter in the family, as the daughter that has come from her husband's house to parents' house. So she is a living presence in the image and she is treated as she is there present. So she is fed, she is, she is, um, she is um, you know, uh, entertained with music, with the devotional songs and her presence is felt very much that she is here for five or six days to stay in the parents' house. So she should be fed well, treated well, entertained well. And that is the feeling of, um, that's how this cooking and making food and all that goes on with with that type of feeling that uh, our daughter, our mother, whatever way you see, she has come from her parents' house uh, and she doesn't come alone in Bengal. She comes with her all children. And what are the who are the children? Durga and Shiva children are she, Ganesha and uh, Lakshmi and Saraswati and Kartike. Ganesha is the god of benignness, of success of removal of all hindrances in our life. That is uh, the son of uh, Durga. And uh, daughter of a daughter of Durga is Lakshmi, the goddess of auspiciousness, of prosperity, of food, pro provide, who provides us food, food that is Lakshmi. Um, so she also is the daughter of Durga. And um, daughter of Durga is another daughter is Saraswati, the daughter who provides us knowledge, speech, music, arts, this fine arts, this all this cultural aspect, fine cultural aspects is the presiding deity of uh, fine cultural aspect and intellect, intellect and uh, learning. So Saraswati also is the daughter of Durga. There is another child of Durga. He is a son and he is uh, Kartikeya. Kartikeya is worshipped uh, in uh, with Durga Puja mostly in uh, Bengal. Uh, but Kartikeya, the deity who is warrior, brave, protective, and he is said to be the commander in chief of the army of gods. That is the Kartikeya's um, um, definition. Deva Senapati. Uh, and Kartikeya protects us from all external uh, problems, external evils, external uh, difficulties, and always for our protection. That is what the Kartikeya is. Kartikeya is very popular in South India as Murugan. Um, uh, uh, so Kartikeya is not worshipped only in Bengal during Durga Puja, but as Murugan is a great deity in, uh, in South India. Uh, as a separate in, uh, deity, not as son of uh, Shiva, but a separate deity who will provide you everything in your life, who will provide you mukti in the, uh, ultimately, and by worshipping whom we get whatever our wishes are there, all wishes are fulfilled. That is the Murugan, which is called Kartika in Bengal. But Kartika's concept is uh, beautiful in Bengal. You see, this, he is the son of Mother Durga and comes to our houses and temples and ashramas and our uh, places of worship and Durga Puja is there with the Divine Mother Durga. So during the Durga Puja, uh, this all they are worshipped, uh, this all Mother Durga is worshipped, including all her children. Surprisingly, it is not only all the sons and benign people and all the good people come with Mother Durga. Mother Durga is considered to be um, who has conquered Mahishasura, as it is described in the uh, Chandi book or uh, Devi Mahatma. Mahishasura represents the evil power and the Durga is the conglomeration or, or, the, or the concentration of epitome of all good power. So there was a final big, big battle and then finally Mother Durga vanquishes um, the Mahishasura who was a Asura who could um, be deceptive and uh, who could manipulate um, and come in different forms. Why call Mahisha? He came in the form of Mahisha or buffalo, sometimes in the form of lion, sometimes in the form of elephant, sometimes in the form of human being. Uh, but he came in the form of buffalo also. That's why, that's why his name is Mahisha. The Asura having the form of buffalo to fight Mother Durga, he came with, in the form of powerful wild buffalo. So that is called Mahisha Asura, the Asura in the form of buffalo. And uh, that Mahisha Asura is uh, vanquished. So in the, um, in the Devi Mahatmyam, it is said how you should worship Mother Durga. Um, that Medha Samuni said um, to, to um, uh, 
the people who had come to him about to know about the divine mother he said how the mother should be worshipped and later on in raghunandana smriti of bengal the uh, the details of uh, divine mother worship, mother Durga worship is mentioned, uh, how mother should be worshipped. So we'll talk about how Swami Vivekananda studied Raghunandana Smriti uh, to, um, to start the mother's worship, Durga worship in Belumat. So here, as I said, all the children are worshipped and also worshipped Mahishasura. Mahishasura, the evil power, there is also power of the divine. So that is also worshipped with flowers, with the bhoga, and offered pranam and puspanjali. All power is the power of divine mother. That is so inclusive thought of, uh, um, of uh, and, and the Sanatana Dharma or uh, Vedanta, that this power manifests as good and bad, but all is the power of the divine mother. So you worship all, though, though you see that all divine, benign, divine power should protect you. But you don't exclude anything. Even the power of evil is also power of divine mother. That's why you worship that power and um, uh, recognize that as the power of divinity who manifests as good and as evil. That's what it is said. So the, if you read the Kali, the mother, the poem of Swami Vivekananda, he says, mother comes when mother comes, not only as goodness and all protective and giving you all the things like Lakshmi, she also comes as terrible. Some like um, making the earthquake and, uh, and, and the tornado and um, uh, rooting the tree, uprooting the trees and all that. Um, and there is death and all that. But that is also the divine power. Can you see divinity in that, the divine power in that? In that also one who can see that divine power to, to him the mother is fully expressed. The mother is manifest as the divine power. So that's how this Durga Puja had started. Actually, this um, Navaratri in India, the holy nine days, is, worship, is um, observed twice a year. One is called Chaitra Navaratri. Another is called Ashvina Navaratri. So one Navaratri in the spring season and another in the autumn season. So earlier, the spring season Navaratri or Durga Puja was the popular. That alone was there. And this Durga Puja that started and became popular in uh, autumn, autumnal Durga Puja or called Sharadiya Durga Puja, its origin is very far. Who worshipped uh, Mother Durga in autumn first time? So the credit goes to Sri Ramachandra of the Ramayana. Sri Ramachandra had to fight Ravana, the evil of his time, that Asura, the Rakshasa Ravana had to be conquered. Rama was incarnation of God, had brought all the power, had come to the world to, to protect the dharma and to vanquish the adharma and to protect the sadhus and destroy the evil. And paritranaya sadhunam vinasaya duskritam. Who do evil, he will vanquish them, he will conquer them, um, eliminate them and he will protect the good people. But... Rama, the incarnation of God, he finds that uh, it is uh, not possible for him to conquer the evil Ravana, who is so powerful. And where to gain the power? When uh, you mm, have no power, you, you think you are lost, the only way to take to protection or get power is the Divine Mother, the ultimate power, the supreme power. And that is Mother Durga. So, but it was the time of autumn. Durga Puja is done in the spring season during his time. So, Rama did untimely Durga Puja. He invoked Divine Mother untimely. That's why this Durga Puja is called Akala Bodhana. That not in time, untimely done Durga Puja. And after Rama, it became so popular that uh, we all do Durga Puja in autumn season. It is uh, now, as I said, it is the socio-cultural and religious worship um, observation. And also it is um, a harvest um, uh, festival also. So all come together 
this autumnal Durga Puja, Saradiya Durga Puja is now the only Durga Puja. There is no Durga Puja as such in springtime. But there is Navaratri in uh, springtime. People do religious fasting and uh, reciting the mantras, doing japam, meditation. All they do during the spring season in the uh, Indian month of Chaitra. And also they do during Durga Puja in the Indian month of um, Ashwin. Uh, Ashwin is September, October. Chaitra is um, will be like um, April, May, uh, May, March, April, May. In that time it will happen, uh, March, April. So that's how this Durga Puja started as the Akala Bodhara. Now, uh, let me see how this Durga Puja started in uh, in the Ramakrishna order. So monks are supposed to Durga Puja, as I said, is a socio-cultural and socio-religious uh, observation. Monks are supposed to meditate and worship and uh, um, and be in prayer and study. Uh, and this is more of um, more of very uh, very popular, uh, but more of a social gathering thing. Durga Puja. What happened is uh, Durga Puja was not done. You know, Ramakrishna Math was started in 1886 after Sri Ramakrishna's um, Maha Samadhi. Um, uh, that Durga Puja started uh, in 1886 when the um, um, Ramakrishna Math started in 1886 when all um, di disciples, uh, young disciples of Sri Ramakrishna gathered together, um, renouncing their home and heart and uh, becoming monk. Uh, 1886 it started and they took uh, monastic vows in January 1887. Uh, so after that uh, they used to do little Durga Puja in Ghatam that was there during Durga Puja time. But never it was done for the public in the image. So what happened Swami Vivekananda returned from the West uh, uh, for the second time and uh, in 1901 uh, he, um, he somehow um, had a great wish to do Durga Puja. One day he comes to um, uh, Brahmananda, who was the president of, um, of uh, Belurmat, and he says to Brahmananda, I wish to have Durga Puja done. I don't know why so much uh, desire is coming to do Durga Puja. And Brahmananda says, I had a dream, brother. I had a dream five, six days ago that Mother Durga is uh, coming from Dakshineshwar, walking through the river and coming to our villa live and is uh, resting there. So I had that vision. I didn't tell you anything, but uh, that I felt. So Swami Vivekananda says, so Mother Durga wants to come. That's why she might have put that desire in me. And uh, this, she also got, gave you vision that she is coming to Belumat uh, and uh, wants worship. That means she wants us to worship her. Now, to do Durga Puja is not an easy thing. There you need so many manpower, so much of money, so much of paraphernalia, and you need so many ritualistic things to, to be all gathered and organized. It's a huge affair. Um, so now the time was already late. It's almost um, Durga Puja time had uh, was there. So now it was difficult to find an image. All images are made uh, by order. In uh, there is a place called um, Kumar Tuli in uh, Kolkata, where uh, there are many um, people are there. Artists are there who make uh, beautiful images of Mother Durga from the clay, uh, from the Ganga clay, Ganga. Uh, of the Ganga river and that beautiful mother image Durga but all are made according to order why will they make if there is no order because it takes time and uh, it's expensive also to make the image so somebody one person was sent to find out if there is an uh, image is still available so all images were sold finally they found one image was uh, was lying there unsold and they say we can give you this image uh, this was ordered by someone, but he didn't pick up. Already we are very close to Durga Puja time. Uh, and then uh, that Durga image was um, got and bought and brought to Belurmat. And it was so beautiful. And before that, uh, Swami Vivekananda went to Holy Mother to seek his permission, to, to seek her permission to do Durga Puja. So, Mother, we want to do Durga Puja. How, what is your, uh, will you bless? She, say, she said, yes, go and do Durga Puja. And Swamiji said, we want your presence during Durga Puja. Swami Vivekananda 
had uh, without doubt felt that Holy Mother is a Mother Durga manifest in human body. So he writes from the West in uh, in, in 90s, before that in the um, 19th century, he writes from, uh, from U.S. to Swami Shivananda, brothers, you have not understood Holy Mother. She is a living Durga. I want to show the world the worship of living Durga. You have not understood who Holy Mother is. So, centering around her, women should grow with energy and power. There should be emancipation of women from all uh, suppression that has seen through centuries uh, uh, of this women power has been suppressed. And centering around Holy Mother, women of India will rise. Women of the world will rise um, to equality to men. Men and women being equal at par, and they will uh, become a uh, blessing for the humanity, putting their all the resources. They are powerful, they are intelligent, they are, um, um, they are loving. So the women power, it cannot be hidden. It cannot be dormant. So rousing women power, Nadi Shakti, the power, divine power that is in women. And Holy Mother is the... Um, representative of that divine power, that Durga manifest in human body, in human being, said Swami Vivekananda long back from India, from America. And now they came, they um, went to Holy Mother and she said, okay, you go ahead with that. And they also requested Mother, Mother, you have to come to Belurmat during Durga Puja if we, we perform. Holy Mother said, okay, I will be there. So uh, Holy Mother also came during Durga Puja and she stayed in uh, Nilambar Babu's uh, house and the Durga Puja started in Belurmat in 1901. Uh, for the priest, there was Krishna Lal Brahmachari. Uh, he was um, appointed priest by the permission of the Holy Mother. And uh, the guide to the priest, it's called Tantra Dharaka, uh, who will guide the worshipper how to what to perform after that because it is elaborate uh, worship. And for that, father of Swami Ramakrishnananda, Ishwar Chandra Bhattacharya, they were in Chakravarti, but Ishwar Chandra Chakravarti or Chandra Bhattacharya was uh, requested to perform the first Durga Puja of Belumat in presence of Holy Mother, in presence of Swami Vivekananda, Swami Brahmananda, and all other brother disciples. It was such a great affair, their great joy uh, that had come. Holy Mother her was herself present there. So, big thing happened. So, uh, how this Durga Puja is done in Ramakrishna order or how this original Durga Puja is done according to the scriptural injunction. Durga Puja is done from uh, from sixth day of the fourth night in the month of Aswin uh, called Shasti. From Shasti to Navami or the ninth day, six, seven, eight, nine. On the tenth day is the final little worship and the immersion of the Durga Puja. On the sixth day, the beginning day, um, it is done... Bodhan, the mother is uh, invited from the Kailasa. She is coming with all her children and she is asked to take rest, surprisingly, not in the house, but in the Bilva tree, in the tree that is so holy to Shiva and also holy to Mother Durga. So Mother Durga is Amantrana, she is invited and asked to rest there. And there she is done the Bodhana, the sixth evening is done the Bodhana. Uh, what is bodhana? Is awakening the mother. Mother is then um, awakened through worship and complete mother. Because this time, they were, the gods are supposed to um, remain dormant and uh, inactive during this uh, time when the um, sun is all uh, dakshinayan. So, but um, mother is done. Bodhana is then akala bodhana. Mother is roused to activity. That is what one aspect of uh, the ritualistic worship. Another aspect is the um, Bengal tradition. The mother has come to uh, her um, parents' house in, in, in the houses and the mother is uh, there. So ritualistic, traditional, scriptural um, aspect and uh, this um, popular aspect, both are combined together in Durga Puja. And after the bodhana are awakening the mother with all the ritualistic worship, then uh, the next sasti is done evening time. And there is then adhivasa. Mother is then, a mother's presence after being seen again is said to present in that villa leaf, villa tree. 
and also mother's presence is uh, invoked in the navapatrika nine plants representative of representative of the divine mother durga nine different kinds of plants in which there are useful um, crops like um, rice and uh, um, uh, rice um, paddy plant and uh, um, the turmeric and uh, um, uh, ginger and all those nice and also there are wild plants wild plants called manukuchu which is not eaten aparajita one type of flower there is also pomegranate uh, all these different kinds of nine different kinds of plants that grow in uh, that part tropical plants are there which are worshipped as the representative of different forms of mother durga and those are called navapatrika and one of them is uh, is banana you will find in if you see the durga image in bengal you will find one uh, banana little leaf of banana hanging with cloth, decorated with uh, covered with um, a sari and uh, near ganesha's image so ganesha's image often people call it ganesha's wife ganesha bow or kola bow so um, the banana banana bride so but that nothing to do with banana bride because it looks like a bride because it's a divine mother and that is decorated that way and it is placed near ganesha that's why ganesha thing the ganesha has nothing to do with the with the navapatrika navapatrika is the nine forms of nine nine different kinds of plants representing representing a different aspect of the divine mother um for example one is called ashoka one plant is there ashoka is shoka rahita shoka harini she is without any misery and she removes all the miseries of the people so uh, that's how this shoka this ashoka is uh, worshiped and uh, there is worshiped uh, uh, haridra or yellow that um, uh, turmeric mm. turmeric uh, is uh, worshiped that way mm. Uh, no, I'm sorry. There is no ginger. There is only turmeric. Uh, so Haridra is worshipped, and Haridra is supposed to be yellow in color, and the Divine Mother's color is also yellow. In the meditation mantra of uh, Divine Mother, she is said to be Atasi Puspa Varnabham. Your form, your complexion is mother is like the Atasi flower. Atasi is a golden, not golden, light yellow flower. Uh, that is widely found found in uh, in the tropical places in Bengal. That is the complexion of Holy Mother's skin. Atasi Puspa Varanabham. So Holy, that uh, Haridra or turmeric is all yellow in color. That's why she represents uh, Mother Durga. And uh, uh, there is a paddy plant, as I said. Paddy, paddy represents the, um, the aspect of Divine Mother, which is... Uh, um, which is sustaining power of the divine mother like the which feeds us which nourishes us so paddy is that lakshmi tvam dhanya rupasi lakshmi o oh divine mother you are of the form of dhanya of a paddy to sustain us to give us energy you are you have come in that form so divine mother is worshipped in different forms that is called navapatrika nine different um, plants um, and one of them is again uh, that um, um, leaf, pillar plant that's very holy, not actually uh, um, grown. Uh, it often grows wild and also for worship people grow. Its fruit is sometimes eaten, but uh, it's more of uh, liked by Shiva very much. And also it's prayer to Durga um, that it is said, Rikshotam Hari Sankarasya Sada Priya. You are always uh, very dear to Shankara. That's what the worship says about uh, the Bilva tree. The branch of Bilva is put there uh, in the Navapatrika. So that's how nine different forms. In the Durga Puja, our worship not only images that are found in the Durga Pratima, the Ganesha, the Lakshmi, Saraswati, and um, Kartika and Mahishasura are also worship different um, animals, like the tiger of the Divine Mother, that is also worshipped. And like the um, mouse of Ganesha, that is also worshipped. Peacock of um, Kartika, that is also worshipped. And also are worshipped different um, diagram that is painted there um, uh, on the Durga Pratima. Also are worshipped Shiva and uh, Narayana, another aspect of Narayana. In Belurmat also, 
uh, this Narayana is the presiding deity. Vishnu is the presiding deity of everything in the world. So we have to worship and please them. So during Durga Puja, Narayana is brought from a nearby Jagannath temple. There is one in the Jagannath temple on the bank of a few, a few distance away, not very far from, walking distance away from Belunmat. They generously gift us the Narayana Shila during Durga Puja. We keep it and we worship Narayana uh, every day uh, with all honor. And then the, finally, after 10th day, we, uh, we return that to the Jagannath temple again. There is Shiva worship, the Shiva that is kept in Holy Mother's temple. That Shiva is brought to the Durga Mandap and uh, he, that Shiva is worshipped there uh, during Durga Puja. And also there are worship different forms of the Divine Mother. Navadurga uh, is worship. Nine forms of the Divine Mother. Jayanti, Mangala, Kali, Bhadra, Kali. Different forms are worshipped. They're, they're formless, but different uh, aspects of the Divine Mother are worshipped. And also and there is was worshipped um, um, Ashta Shakti, uh, Nava Shakti, in fact, nine nine powers of uh, Durga. The, all the uh, powers of gods, Brahmani, Aindri, Vaishnavi, um, like that, all are worshipped um, in that way. Um, all powers of God, Maheshwari, all God's powers are worshipped there in Durga Puja time. Nava Shakti, Nava Durga, and also are worshipped uh, Kshetrapala, Batuka, um, and all those are worshipped during Durga Puja time, including different, all the deities that is there. Durga Puja, that's why becomes a very elaborate worship of, uh, of the modern times. It is like they say, like the... Uh, there is to be Ashwamedha worship during um, in the Vedic times. Ashwamedha later on also a huge worship um, having which, which required horse sacrifice. Uh, so and um, that type of worship converted into Durga Puja, huge yagya where whole village used to unite and there is a fire worship. That now is in modern days is Durga Puja, very elaborate where whole village uh, gathers together. I, though it started as a worship in a rich man's house, a landlord or a um, kingly person's house, um, because they could afford to worship There's so much of expenses. And there has to be, for bathing of Divine Mother, has to be brought um, earth, soil, from, from many places, from all the crossing of the road and um, and the, and where the cattle are got and the king's palace and the poor man's place everywhere this uh, on the on the from um, the temple all the places little little um, soil little little clay is uh, brought this earth and that is offered to to bathe for the divine mother durga also water is brought for the divine mother water from where from all the rivers holy rivers ganga yamuna and godavari all this um, all this river are, are brought narmada all holy rivers oceans and also from water from rain water water that dew water you'll be surprised how elaborate the puja has been uh, uh, has been thought of now all that is collected and is offered to the divine mother three days of worship main worship three days saptami astami navami all that those three days uh, it is done mm, uh, that uh, mahasrana and all that is done uh, astami and navami is the mahasrana done that way so all that worship is done to the divine mother um, so that's how elaborate is the divine must worship. And in Belurmat, if other panels where it has become more of a socio-cultural program, mother's image is there, but people all gather to see mother. And uh, there are little puja is done in the morning. After that, and bhoga is also offered. But that is a minute, um, a small part of the Durga Puja in uh, many uh, this huge um, decorative places, common Durga Puja, as they say, and done in on the on the places in the park or uh, in the road. Sometimes uh, in the common places where all people gather and go to observe. More emphasis is on the um, on the art art of the mother durga and art in the decoration and art in the uh, in the that uh, panel that they make out of cloth different kinds of arts and decoration of flowers and the lights and all that more emphasis on that uh, less on on the worship but worship becomes still the root of durga puja um, but in belurmat uh, main emphasis is on the worship 
and worship is done meticulously with all the things that is described in Raghunandana Smriti, all that is gathered. Whatever is said to the minutest detail, everything is done. Worship is done scripturally. So why Swami Vivekananda started Durga Puja? There is a saying. One was Swamiji grew up in the Durga Puja, seeing Durga Puja from his childhood and all those monks that did that. And he was missing Durga Puja when he was in the West. And as a monk also, he was not doing Durga Puja since they joined. So that was a missing part. He really wanted to uh, see Durga Puja. And he once he wrote to Raja of Khetri also, I have not seen Durga Puja for 10 years. And later on, not only he wanted to see, but wanted to perform Durga Puja. So that desire came by the will of the Divine Mother herself. And Raja Maharaj also, um, it um, coincided with Raja Maharaj's um, vision. Other thing of worshipping Durga Puja was another need. That uh, Ramakrishna order monks were uh, so little different from the traditional uh, monks in their liberal views. We accept all religions and we respect uh, um, all prophets and worship the birthdays of um, many prophets, um, those who are not worshipped by the uh, common Hindus because uh, Sri Ramakrishna vision, that is our um, that is our system that we worship all, uh, worship, accept, respect and worship all different um, religions and religious prophets and incarnations. So that was not common in Orthodox Hinduism. So they thought we are different, not only in our liberal views, but our um, views of our food habits were different. Our um, dietary things were different from the Orthodox monks. We are more liberal in our food. Uh, What should we eat? So what should we eat? We were more liberal. Whatever people wants to eat, uh, that was our idea. Nutritious food, it should be there, as it is said, sattvika food. Uh, that also many people um, commented they are not all vegetarian and all that. So that was another thing. So we are like uh, different people. We are not like uh, Hinduism. Another thing was there that we were prescribed, Swami Vivekananda prescribed work as our sadhana, the seva as our sadhana. Other monastic people didn't do seva. So they were only for prayers and meditation and study and uh, and, and uh, preaching. So we did in addition to all those, the seva, the service, that was our main feature. So that's how um, we were like, uh, as if we are not... Um, we are not following the um, traditional Hinduism. So we had to, um, Swami Vivekananda wanted to say, we are Hindus, we are performing the um, very spirit. So we have some modern views, some uh, um, some views that are so relevant for Sanatana Hindu concept, that which accepts all religions. Um, Sanatana Hindu Takarda Advaita, it should be all inclusive. It cannot just confine itself and exclude something. So this inclusiveness of Advaita is the true Hinduism. And we are not deviated from true Hinduism to show that also this Durga Puja was uh, started in there. So many people were invited, the uh, local people, the Brahmins who were really um, thinking that we were different. And when they came and saw our Puja, uh, our this Durga Puja, they were uh, sure that um, this um, they follow the Sanatana Dharma. They are um, proper Hindus. They are uh, really Advaitic. They are real monks. Uh, then slowly they started um, making him, this uh, Ramakrishna order as a part of Hindus. The, the, the misunderstanding that they had was gone because by seeing the, the Durga Puja, the way Durga Puja we perform. That's how um, this uh, Durga Puja was performed in uh, Belurmat, and it is still uh, continuing with the same fervor, same uh, purity, uh, same uh, joy that is happening along with the Durga Puja in the society that is uh, done. Swami Shivananda um, said very nicely about uh, the speciality of Durga Puja in Belurmat. Let me read that. The worship of the mother at our monastery is without parallel. Here it is a worship of pure devotion. In our worship of mother, we do not have any other motive than to please her. Our prayer is this, mother, be pleased to give us faith and devotion and do good to the world. Our worship is of the 
purest kind. The scriptures say that when the image is beautiful, the worship is devout, the worshipper is devout, and he who assists in worship is pure and selfless. Such worship evokes a special manifestation of the deity. Here, all conditions are fulfilled. That is why Mother is so manifest here in Belurumat. Similarly, we try to do in all of the centers of um, Ramakrishna Mission in India where Durga Puja is elaborately performed. We do Durga Puja in the West also. Mostly we do it on Ashtami Day in a brief manner. And in Toronto, we do three days. Though it is not elaborate, but we try to do as much as I could accommodate uh, according to the situation here. On three days, Astamin and Navami and Dasami will be doing Durga Puja this year in Toronto on 22nd at 11 a.m. October 22nd at 11 a.m. and October 23rd at 6.30 p.m. and October 24th at 6.30 p.m. You all are invited and welcome to attend the Durga Puja in Belurmat. We and cannot do here with all totality, with all elaborateness. No, nowhere in the West we can do that way. Everywhere it is a little compromise has to be there. Where we'll get the water from all uh, different holy rivers of India. Where we'll get all um, uh, clay from a holy places of India or place of India. That we cannot do. So we have to somehow do it symbolic worship. Uh, here, um, even in the places where they do according to Tithi or other places in the temples, in the Ramakrishna Mission also we do that way. But um, Toronto Durga Puja is the, you can say, the most elaborate uh, Durga Puja among the uh, Vedanta societies in the world. We do three days uh, in other places we could do, we can do only on Ashtami Day generally is done in a brief way. So uh, this is the Durga Puja thing. Uh, and worship of Mother Durga, invoking the Divine Mother's power for the goodness of the whole humanity, To as I prayed in the beginning, uh, so that uh, Mother comes and protects us all, gives us strength to, uh, to bear the problem of life and go ahead in our spiritual journey. Mother's worship is to find the mother herself. It is uh, not only to uh, find, uh, um, fi find the comfort of life. It is the goal of mother worship is to find mother, find the reality, find, our, uh, find the truth. That is the real purpose of mother worship. And through Durga Puja, we try to achieve that. At the end of uh, today's lecture, uh, let me conclude with uh, Swami Vivekananda's saying about mother worship. Eternal, unquestioning, self-surrender to mother alone can give us peace. Love her for herself without fear or fervor. Love her because you are her child. See her in all good and bad alike. This alone will come sameness and bliss eternal. That is Mother herself when we realize her thus. Then alone will come sameness and bliss eternal. That is Mother herself when we realize her thus. That she is the power, the innate power in all beings. The whole universe is the manifestation of Mother Durga. And uh, that manifestation comes as bad and good alike. And uh, we, if we could see that Divine Mother in every aspect of uh, this world, in every happening in this world, and praying to Mother to give us uh, the benignness and yet to see her, the, all the power, uh, our, her manifestation, then alone we can find her who is bliss eternal with existence absolute, which is consciousness ultimate. So we bow down to Mother Durga, Durgam Saranam Aham Prapadde. Oh, I, we bow down to the Mother Durga, the, the divine power that is manifest at this universe. Om.
दुर्गाम शरण महम प्रपद्ये जय भगवान थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर अटेंडिंग द दुर्गा अटेंडिंग द डिवाइन वर्शिप ऑफ मदर दुर्गाज लेक्चर टुडे एंड नेक्स्ट संडे विल बी दुर्गा पूजा एट इलेवन ओ क्लॉक एट टोरंटो नाउ आई क्लोज टूडे सर्विस विद द क्लोजिंग चैट्स शांति 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 हरि ओ तत्सत्मकृष्णापणमस्तु जय श्री गुरु महाराज जी की जय जय महामाई की जय जय स्वामी जी महाराज जी की जय जय गंगा माई की जय जय भगवान बुद्ध की जय जय ईशा मूषा की जय जय श्री श्री दुर्गा माई की जय सर्वस्तर तु दुर्गा सर्वोद्रा पश्यत सर्वसदुद्धिमात्र नंद हरि ओम तत्सत मे ऑल बी फ्रीड फ्रॉम इंजर्स मे ऑल रियलाइज वट इज गुड मे ऑल बी एक्चुएटेड बाय नोबल थॉट्स मे ऑल रिजॉइस एवरीवेयर Om peace 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 be and trust all Varunaji